I'd like a bar of chocolate, please. Do you remember that mouth-watering chocolate candy bar that not only promised to delight your taste buds, but might just hold a golden ticket that could make your wildest dreams come true? That's right, the Wonka Bar, which has captured our imagination since it was featured in 1971's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, leapt from the big screen to store shelves. But it's been a long time since we've seen that famous Wonka Bar on the shelves in any store. So why is it the most famous candy bar across literature and cinema, and perhaps the whole world, no longer exists? What happened to the Wonka Chocolate Bar? The answer may surprise you, so you don't want to miss this episode. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so now, and give us a thumbs up if you want more videos like this. And make sure you stay tuned to the end to see how to get this awesome, you get nothing, Willy Wonka inspired graphic design from the amazing artists at MixTees.com. I'm so glad you could come. This is going to be such an exciting day. I hope you enjoy it. The Wonka Bar, its fantastical chocolate factory, and the confectioner that made it came from the mind of children's author Road Dahl, who wrote about it initially in the 1964 novel Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The inspiration behind the Wonka Bar and the story stems from Dahl's childhood. As a young schoolboy in Britain, the chocolate candy company Cadbury would send out their latest and greatest concoctions to the school children for them to sample and share feedback. Cadbury and Roundtree were England's two largest chocolate makers, and they often tried to steal trade secrets by sending spies into the other's factory. And voila, the famous Wonka Bar is born. And it's because of the Wonka Bar that Willy Wonka and his chocolate factory became famous all around the world. Well, the Wonka Bar and Quaker Oats. Yes, that Quaker Oats. You see, the 1964 novel was a bestseller since its first publication, but it's the movies that put it in the pop culture zeitgeist. And the 1971 movie Charlie and the Chocolate Factory doesn't happen without Quaker Oats. The company made famous by putting oatmeal in every home in America wanted to get to the candy business. Hollywood director Mel Stewart, at the urging of his 11-year-old daughter, brought the idea of turning the famous book into a movie to producer David L. Walper. Walper loved the idea, and as it turned out, he was working on a project with the Quaker Oats Company and knew they wanted into the candy business. Walper was able to persuade Quaker Oats to finance the movie for a cool $3 million in exchange for exclusive rights to use the Wonka name on a line of candy that would receive product placement in the movie. It was reported that Quaker also insisted on the title being changed from Charlie to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory to place the focus more on the eccentric chocolate maker so their soon-to-be brand of Wonka chocolate bars would be in the limelight. I'm a trifle deaf in this ear. Speak a little louder next time. The Willy Wonka Candy Company launched in May, a month before the release of the 1971 film. Previously known as Breaker Confections of Chicago, the company was mostly owned by Quaker Oats and had already been in the process of developing a brand new candy bar. And seeing the opportunity, Quaker Oats set in motion one of the grandest launches of a candy bar in history. Not only were they getting prime placement for their new product with the opportunity to reach millions of eyes, but they would also earn part of the film's profit. But problems arose when the new Willy Wonka candy company couldn't master the recipe for the Wonka bar in time for the premiere of the movie. While they were able to launch the Super Scrunch Bar and Peanut Butter Oompas, the signature candy bar from the movie would have to wait. The film hit the big screens on June 30th, and Quaker Oats suddenly had another problem. The movie was somewhat of a flop, earning only $4 million in its theatrical run. And the trouble for Quaker Oats and the new Willy Wonka Candy Company was that marketing was directly tied to the Wonka brand in the film. And as a result, you may be surprised to learn the original Wonka bar never saw the light of day for commercial release in stores. Oompa, loompa, doompa -dee -doo. Remember when we said the release date for the film was rapidly approaching and the Quaker Oats company had yet to develop a workable recipe for the soon to be heavily promoted Wonka bar? That's because there was a fatal flaw with the production of their star attraction. The candy bar simply melted away too easily. The candy bar was intended to be like a Cadbury dairy milk bar and was expected to be sold with various marketing connections to the different books that Dahl had written in the same universe as Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. But unable to get the candy on the shelves, the Wonka bar seemed to be destined for failure. What was available as part of the Willy Wonka Candy Company? When the brand launched around the theatrical release of the film in the early 1970s, you could only get your hands on those two products, the Super Scrunch Bar and the Peanut Butter Oompas, 
named after the Oompa Loompas from the movie. Oompas were similar to peanut butter M&Ms and were discontinued in the early 1980s. But for nearly a decade after the brand launched, the Willy Wonka Super Scrunch Bar served as the face of the brand. The bar was covered in chocolate and filled with a peanut butter flavored interior. The Willy Wonka Candy Company did capitalize on other products found in the movie and went on to produce everlasting gobstoppers and even a scrum diddly umptious bar. Touted in Doll's book as the perfect chocolate bar, this commercially released candy bar was similar to the Toblerone and featured bits of toffee. Only preceded by the Wonka bar, the everlasting gobstopper may be one of the most memorable candies from the film. Taking on a role of its own, it was the vehicle that fueled the greedy Slugworth as he attempted to bribe children that were visiting the factory to steal one for his own opportunistic purposes. And don't forget the name, Everlasting Gobstopper. The candy is similar to a jawbreaker and available in a variety of flavors, including at one time a hot variation. With Quaker unable to make it work, the Willy Wonka Candy Company was acquired by the Sunmark Corporation in 1975 when Charlie and the Chocolate Factory began airing once a year on NBC around Thanksgiving. The Sunmark Corporation was known for inventing sweet tarts in the early 1960s and the powdered candy Pixie Sticks and thought they'd try to capitalize on the movie coming to television. And while it did reach a lot of children, it was about as popular as a Disney movie of the week and hadn't yet reached the upper levels of pop culture that could affect candy sales. But then something happened in 1984. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory became available on VHS. And as it turns out, Gene Wilder's eccentric Willy Wonka combined with a morality story about spoiled children who got what they deserved struck a chord with everyone. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, as well as the Wonka Bar, would become an immediate cult classic and a household name. And just like the Quaker Oats and the Sunmark Corporation before it, it was Nestle's turn to bring the Wonka Bar from the movies into the world. So in 1988, the maker of the Crunch Bar bought the Wonka brand in the hopes of bringing that elusive Wonka Bar to eager children everywhere. Up until that time, Nestle was primarily associated with beverage production, including condensed milk and infant formula. The acquisition by the well-established brand of Nestle led to an even greater distribution opportunity. Willy Wonka branded candies were now not only available in the U.S. and Canada, but across Europe, Asia, and even Africa. Nestle went on to become one of the most well-known and trusted food companies in the world. Not limited to chocolate, their other familiar brands included Stouffer's, Lean Cuisine, DiGiorno, and Coffee Mate. When Nestle bought the Willy Wonka candy shop in 1988, they quickly went to work on marketing these products with nods to the movie. The Wonka bar in formulation at the time was a graham cracker dipped in milk chocolate. The Wonka bar hadn't really taken off, although you could purchase them at various locations over the years. It was actually nerds, Laffy Taffy, Fun Dip, and Gobstoppers that were keeping the brand sales up for Nestle at the time. In 1991, rumors began swirling of a remake for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and Nestle wasn't about to miss a twice-in-a-lifetime marketing opportunity. It would take 14 years for the Doll family to allow the remake to be made after a role had been disappointed in the first movie. The 2005 film directed by Tim Burton and starring Johnny Depp as the eccentric Willy Wonka was just the opportunity Nestle had been waiting for to launch the Wonka bar into the stratosphere. We were all rooting for Charlie Bucket to snag that golden ticket while also secretly wishing that we too would someday have our chance. And Nestle knew it. The Willy Wonka Candy Company launched a certain for the golden ticket as a contest tie-in to the 2005 film. The contest set the world on a mission to find one of five available golden tickets, just like in the movie. While you didn't win a trip to the candy factory, the grand prize did include $10,000 and a lot of candy. On top of its other Wonka products, Nestle also started selling the Wonka Exploder, Wonka Lada, and Wonka Biscuits, which also could have a golden ticket inside. One of Nestle's European candy factories also began making Whipple scrumptious fudge mallow delights and nutty crunch surprise as well as triple dazzle caramel all of these new candies were mentioned in the 2005 film which gave the brand a boost and kept it on shelves for several more years but the line of wonka bars never rose to the level of a hershey's three musketeer or snickers or for that matter even nestle crunch and as a result the original line of wonka bars were pulled off the market in 2010 
Perhaps because of the intense competition in basic milk chocolate and competing with so many other bars, that same year, the Nestle Company unveiled Wonka Exceptionals. For the first time ever, the Willy Wonka Candy Company would be offering premium chocolate products, yet with the same beloved and familiar branding attached. This line of candy bars included a scrum diddly umptious chocolate bar, a Wonka Waterfall Bar, and a Wonka Domed Dark Chocolate Bar. Like the competition back in 2005, Nestle once again launched golden tickets in these candies, which could make you a cool $12,500 and a trip to anywhere in the world. World. But unfortunately, the Wonka Exceptionals failed to raise the bottom line, and Nestle was becoming less enchanted by the candy business with the slow decline in sales. Their focus began transitioning to the increased public interest in healthier ventures. They sought out investments in blossoming health-focused brands, like the gluten-free prepared meal service Freshly, as well as the plant-based food company Sweet Earth. So on March 10, 2017, the Willy Wonka Candy Company was rebranded to the Nestle Candy Shop in the likely effort to see if the Nestle brand could have a greater impact on sales. But the results were clear, and after 30 years, Nestle wanted out. Only a year later, Nestle sold its U.S. confectionery business to the Ferrero Group for $2.8 billion. Although the purchase of Wonka was not the primary concern for the company who brought Nutella to the world, Ferrero received more than 20 American brands from Nestle, including Butterfinger, Baby Ruth, and yes, Wonka. Today, you'll have an easier time finding a golden ticket than a Wonka bar. A variety of online sites will make the original movie-wrapped Wonka bar complete with golden ticket, but without the candy bar. With Wonka, the third theatrical release out in theaters now, we wanted to know if the Wonka bar could make a comeback. We contacted Ferraro Rocher North America and inquired if the Wonka bar might get another chance, especially in light of the marketing opportunity with the new movie. But the company redirected us to their subsidiary, Ferrara Candy Company, who currently owns the Willy Wonka brand. Unfortunately, Ferrara chose not to unveil a new Wonka bar in order to take advantage of the new Wonka movie, but they did release a new product called Wonka Magic Hat Gummies to commemorate the new feature film. Fantastic invention. Revolutionize the industry. You can suck them and suck them and suck them and they'll never get any smaller. Never. Who knows what the future holds for the magical Wonka bar? For now, it will remain a relic of the past, even as Willy Wonka and his chocolate factory continue to delight us into the future. You may not be able to get your hands on Wonka chocolate now, but if you're craving nostalgia, the Ferrara Candy Shop has a few Wonka candies, including the new Wonka gummies, fun dips, and of course, the everlasting gobstoppers. But what do you think? Did the Wonka bar get its fair shake, or should the Ferrara Candy Company give it another try? Did you ever get a chance to eat one? If so, share what you thought of them in the comments below. Also, check out this incredible You Get Nothing Willy Wonka-inspired graphic design from the amazing artists at MixedTees.com. Get 20% off your purchase by using coupon code THEPOPCAST. The link is in the description below. Until next time. What is it? Nothing. Well, it's obviously something because you said, huh. Forget it. Very well.